The story of the Renegade in WCW is, unfortunately, a sad one. Most will look at a picture of Renegade and immediately laugh at the blatant Ultimate Warrior ripoff, and who could blame them? There was absolutely no hiding that Rick Wilson was brought into WCW to look, act, walk, talk and work like Jim Helwig. What some people may not be aware of though was how Wilson's run in WCW, and more importantly the weeks following the end of his WCW run, had affected him mentally. When all was said and done, the Renegade story ended with tragedy. So for a change of pace in today's video, let's look at the Renegade's time in WCW. Rick Wilson was an exotic male dancer in the early 1990s. After seeing wrestling on his TV and knowing he had a body that would open up doors for him, he decided to seek professional wrestling training from one of the greats, Killer Kowalski. Kowalski had already trained the likes of Perry Saturn and Triple H, so it wasn't like Renegade's tuition was of poor quality. Rick began working independent dates as Rio, Lord of the Jungle. The guy was seriously jacked and his impressive look even got him work in Wrestle in Romance in Japan. Rick worked for three years across the Indies and Japan before his big break came in 1995. Generally through 93 to 95, WCW was on a spending spree, signing all the old WWF talent they could get their hands on. From Earthquake to Savage, Hogan to the Boss Man, if you were a name in New York, you could pretty much consider yourself hired in Atlanta. One person WCW could not get their hands on at this time was the Ultimate Warrior. Around late 1994, Warrior was not even wrestling anywhere in the United States and had gone into a semi-retirement. The story that's been believed was that WCW came close to securing Jim Helwig's services for the WCW Uncensored event in 95 and that WCW were so confident that Warrior was about to sign with them that they began teasing him on TV. This, according to Eric Bischoff, is not true. On his 83 Weeks podcast, Eric Bischoff revealed that WCW were never in talks to sign the Ultimate Warrior in late 94 or early 95. Keep this in mind going forward though, it makes this whole story a whole lot worse. Hulk Hogan was scheduled to face Big Van Vader at Uncensored, and on TV before the pay-per-view, Hogan would say that he has the, quote, ultimate surprise. This ultimate surprise would be in Hogan's corner for the match against Vader, and should there be any questionable tactics from Vader or even Ric Flair, who would be in Vader's corner for the match, then this ultimate surprise would even the odds. The impression given here by Hogan was that WCW had finally secured the Ultimate Warrior. Remember though, according to Bischoff, Ultimate Warrior had not been talking to WCW at all. Promos with Hogan talking about the power of the ultimate surprise aired weekly on WCW TV programming, so naturally, fans expected the ultimate warrior. Step forward Rick Wilson. He had a similar body type, similar hair, similar size, and he was jacked. He had been working for a few years already and was seen as Eric Bischoff in the WCW brass as probably the next best thing to ultimate warrior. They were wrong. I'm not saying for a moment that Rick Wilson doesn't kind of resemble the Ultimate Warrior. From a distance then yeah, he looks a bit like the Warrior, but this was just a bad idea altogether and you would hope that Eric Bischoff learned a valuable lesson here. Don't promise what you can't deliver. To save the main event of Uncensored turning into a total shitstorm when the fans noticed that this ain't the Warrior, the decision was made to reveal the Renegade on TV before the pay-per-view. They didn't come out and flat out show that this wasn't the warrior though, but instead they covered him in smoke and showed him in front of a green screen doing all the ultimate warrior mannerisms. WCW here was intentionally misleading their fans. At Uncensored, after Hogan's entrance, a bad rip off of the ultimate warrior's theme music played in the arena and out came the renegade dashing to the ring, shaking the ropes and overpowering Ric Flair with just one hand. Maybe some fans were actually fooled by all this as the Renegade got a decent pop when he came into the ring, but still, you just had the feeling that this isn't going to last long, right? 
Well, Renegade would go undefeated for around six months. Eric Bischoff said of the debut of Renegade, Our frame of reference during this time was largely based on what worked for the competition in the early 90s. Renegade was a manifestation of that disease. If we ever ripped off WWF, then this was it and we done it poorly. It sucked. Could you possibly get anybody to do a worse job of ripping off the Ultimate Warrior? The answer is no. Renegade was paired up with Jimmy Hart as he set off on his six month undefeated streak. He went on to win his only title in WCW at the Great American Bash in 95 where the Renegade defeated Arn Anderson for the TV title. WCW in 1995 still had a loyal fan base, and when they saw Renegade defeat the company veteran Arn Anderson on pay per view, the fans got pretty upset. Anderson was also not shy in revealing that the WCW locker room generally didn't like Rick Wilson, due to him getting this massive push while other guys struggled to even get on the B shows. Paul Orndorff was also given the pleasure of putting Renegade over in title defences that followed, with their match at Bash at the Beach 95 being one of the worst matches WCW ever put on pay per view, and that's saying something. Rick Wilson was being booked into a corner here as he was put behind the eight ball, with no real hope of ever coming out of this time period as a valuable asset to WCW. Keep in mind though, the guy was doing what he was told. As the months went on, it was becoming clear that the Renegade character was going absolutely nowhere. The cheers had dwindled as fans noticed that Renegade had nowhere near the same charisma as Ultimate Warrior. There was one thing that Renegade copied well from Jim Helwig, and that was his level of in-ring work. I don't like to speak bad of any wrestlers on these videos, but we all can't deny that Warrior's work rate and ability were lacking, but Warrior was able to make up for his shortcomings by being a naturally charismatic and eccentric superstar. Renegade did not have these same qualities to help balance his lack of in-ring ability. What we were left with was pretty much a guy failing miserably to be something that he was not. And you may also find it unfair to make these comparisons to Ultimate Warrior, but really, it's impossible not to. Soon enough, the real Ultimate Warrior Jim Helwig would denounce the Renegade in magazine interviews, making it perfectly clear that the Renegade character has nothing to do with him and was a blatant ripoff. At the same time, coincidentally or not, Rick Wilson's momentum came to a screeching halt when he dropped the TV title to Dallas Page at Fall Brawl in 1995. He was then buried by Paul Orndorff in under two minutes and Jimmy Hart stopped managing the Renegade after telling him he was a nobody while wiping his face paint off. From here the downward spiral began and unfortunately the spiral didn't end until it was at the very very bottom. WCW had previously booked the guy in such a way that he was doomed to fail and when he returned he was jobbed out at every given opportunity. Who really knows what happened behind the scenes, but even the commentators were burying him during matches, which was really odd. Renegade formed a tag team with Joe Gomez who, in all honesty, was also quite low on the WCW totem pole. The fans couldn't have cared less, and throughout the remainder of the year, Renegade was used as a jobber on WCW TV shows. Ironically, when the Ultimate Warrior did indeed show up to WCW, Rick Wilson was still under contract with the company. Rick was used as a Warrior stunt double when Jim Helwig was with the company. Chewed up and spat out by WCW and the fans, Renegade worked his last match on the December 7th episode of Nitro in 98, where he lost the Wrath. He was then released from his contract. This is when Rick Wilson went beyond rock bottom. Unfortunately, just two months after getting released from his WCW contract, Rick decided to take his own life with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Rick was only 33 years old. The widely believed story here is that Rick went into depression after losing his job with WCW. Apparently, Rick tried to find work elsewhere but was not successful in his job search. The picture we have painted here is that of a man who had been quickly pushed to the top spot within WCW and quickly lost it all. 
and as the months went on, the company used him to get other talent over. Stuck with a gimmick that unashamedly copied another, there was never an upside to the renegade character. Assuming Rick didn't have any underlying issues, and he did indeed end it all due to being depressed over losing his job with WCW, what this does is really highlight how cold the wrestling business can be. I think it really needs to be stressed also that there is little information available regarding the exact reasons behind Rick's decision to end his life. The timeline definitely fits the narrative though, but do keep in mind we don't know the 100% reasoning. For all we know, Rick could have been dealing with other major problems in his life. In a recent interview, Stevie Ray of Harlem Heat said, Trying to emulate the Ultimate Warrior and the thing they had with Vince, it was counterproductive. They took that gimmick off him as fast as they put it on him, and they didn't do anything with him again. This can be very disheartening for a young man. A lot of people have the mindset to deal with it, and a lot of people don't. God rest his soul, Rick was a good dude and I miss him. I don't mind saying it, but this was another WCW fuck up. These are people who don't have the talent to think of really good angles and gimmicks in professional wrestling. <laughs>